Welcome to the Great Mind Stage presented by Roundel. It's time to give a round of applause and welcome our next session to the stage. Please sit down. Good to right. see you, everyone in person. I can't believe it. So excited. I'm Josh Golden. Uh, I'm the CMO of Quad. So excited to be here with my friends. I have Todd Kaplan, who is the Vice President of Marketing for Pepsi. Believe it or not, a very important person at Pepsi, Vice President of Marketing. Anyway, sorry, I could go on. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Rob Noy, who is the Chief Creative Officer for VaynerMedia, and uh, Louis Miguel, uh, better known by his friends as Louis Me, uh, who is the Chairman, uh, sorry, Creative Chairman and CEO of Alma. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to be talking with you three gentlemen today about this great, great, great uh, work that, uh, that you ex recently executed, which I believe is uh, award worthy. But before we get to that, let's, uh, to, well, I have a little icebreaker. How about that thought? Ooh. Sorry, right. I did not uh, fully brief them on this icebreaker thought. So um, uh, what is your uh, go-to uh, karaoke song? Wow. Um, are we going to start right now? Yes, yes hit it. To, can someone play the track? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, actually, can you cue it up? Is no, it? I was actually joking. No. Um, but um, I'd say for me, um, Poison by Belle Viv DeVoe. Yes. Uh, Go you know, straight back. Never, right? never yeah. trust a big button to smile. That that's, is that's a words life's life. truth. <laughs> um, Rob? I got to go with uh, Teen Spirit and Nirvana. OK, OK. We are, we are the champions. Oh, we, that's crowd Spiritually, favorite. I dig that. I like that one. So I uh, ordinarily thank you uh, for that extraordinarily funny icebreaker. Can we do it over? Do it over? No, I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of audience. Yeah. We, have to, we have to warm it up. Uh, so, um, so one of the things that I found in my history of coming to Advertising Week is, um, well, it tends to be a little self-serving sometimes. And I have, uh, I have asked, as the moderator of this particular conversation, to perhaps inspire a different level of conversation for all of you who are attending virtually, uh, for those of you who are here. You should walk away with insight and inspiration from this conversation that should, in fact, change what you do tomorrow. I had, a, in the briefing call with these terrific gentlemen, uh, and uh, it, in fact, changed something that I did uh, the next hour. So um, perhaps some insight will come, some level of insight will come, hopefully, if they're very brilliant, which I know they will be, uh, that you'll get the same level of, of excitement. So, um, so I just wanted to sort of set up the, the, the premise of this conversation today. So uh, Todd, I'll start with you, because sure. you are to my right, dealer's right, it's dealer's left, right? Anyway, dealer's right. Uh, and uh, I, you had an idea that, that I think is very inspiring. And, and really, the sort of the spiritual conversation about this is how agencies and brands can collaborate best together. And I've had a, a long relationship with Todd. and, and and Louis, me, and Rob, I, I know, of course, from our life back in the agency side. So these particular uh, individuals know how to partner well. And um, Todd, one thing that you talked about, that, which I really want to start with, is sure. this concept of an open brief. Can you discuss what that is? Yeah, it's what, it basically starts from the premise of, you know, these are our creative thought partners. You know, uh, yeah. all our agencies know our brand inside and out, no different than us. And we want to, you know, I don't want to create, creativity is something that's an iterative process. You don't want to shut it down and you want to encourage it. And so we say, have this policy where we have an open brief or something we call round zero, uh, where basically any agency that ever wants an audience with me or our team on any subject, um, we'll, take the, we'll take the meeting, like unbriefed or not. And a lot of times that's inspiring for the teams to bring weird ideas, crazy things that sometimes as in the case of what we'll talk about, build in uh, something really special. Yeah, and it's it's really kind of ballsy, actually, to just go in with like a, I don't need you to set up a hardcore, I don't need you to come up with any agenda, I just like hearing great ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and the, the thought is as a, as a client, and again, we, there's nothing worse both on the client side and on the agency side than when someone's going through 10 pages of boards and detailed script lines and stuff of a concept that you're like not even aligned to at the start and you're waste, waiting there for 30 minutes or whatever. And so he said, hey, come in with the one liner of like, what's the nugget? What's the idea? Mm. Let's talk about it. And then like, if there's a there there, cool, let's go make it a project and get after it a little. Oh, can you give me a little bit of insight on what the, the what we'll be talking about today and then maybe we could make yeah, it? Yeah, sure. So in, so in this instance, um, you know, and like I said, creativity is iterative and comes from different places. So uh, Louis May came to me. Uh, with an idea that uh, the Alma folks had, uh, you know, found the Pepsi logo inside of a bunch of other brand logos, you know, ragu pasta sauce, the NFL logo. It's 
said, hey, there's something there about partnering. And I had just come from a, a meeting with our R&D team about kind of how Pepsi tastes with different foods and pairings. And <laughs> I, would, I want to hear all about that meeting. <laughs> scientifically, um, burgers go better with Pepsi. And so actually, there's stuff of how it breaks down the grease in the mouth, all that kind of stuff. And we said, hey, what if we ended up, could we do something like this and really talk about the burger chains with that and how that none of them pour Pepsi, they all pour our competitor. And there's a real rich creative tension there to build off. And so we started this conversation that then turned into this really, um, I think, really fun, challenger-esque uh, idea that just kind of grew from there. Well, that's a terrific tease. Why don't I, hold on. I have the clicker in my pocket, guys. Here we go. <laughs> um, well, why don't we just quickly show the reel so you can see the work, OK? Here it comes. Sure. It's a scientific fact. Burgers taste better with Pepsi. But for decades, Coke has spent billions of dollars boxing Pepsi out of the big three fast food restaurants. So every time someone orders the world's most famous burgers, they're being robbed of the best tasting burger experience. On National Burger Day, the high holy day of fast food burgerdom, we set out to right this wrong. Introducing Burgers Go Better with Pepsi. We bought America Pepsi if they ditched their Coke on National Burger Day. To launch, we showed people something they couldn't unsee. Pepsi and the burgers they love have actually been together all along. We shot the campaign practically, playing origami with real burger wrappers from real McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King, and found our logo hiding in plain sight. We released our ads in print and put the big three fast food restaurants on notice, placing our message right on their doorstep. We brought their iconic mascots along for the ride. And we even got help from a famous Wendy and King. On National Burger Day, we had people posting about our soda. might not always be on the menu, it's always in the picture. What a, what a terrific, a terrific thank you for that. It was excellent work. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was really great. Uh, Louis Me, just because it's a genius idea, so let's just start with the, the logo thought. It's so, so smart. I, I'm a big believer in um, uh, I love the moment of inspiration. I love exploring that. Can you talk to me about how, in fact, you landed and found that, 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 that was it an accident? Tell me how it worked. You know, the merit uh, goes to the team. In fact, uh, you know, Danny and Bruno are the creative team. Bruno is celebrating his birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Bruno. 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 Uh, Meg, who runs the business, and then our studio, Yeyo and, and uh, Jay, they made it happen. But uh, it was interesting because they came to our office, you know, first Alvar, our, our CCO, who has a great eye, he said, there's something. And I called uh, Todd and I said, we have something that I think could be Based very open part. brief, open it, brief well, inv invitation. Here's the deal. <laughs> it, he is rare, because if you think about it, there's a paradox. Clients get paid to protect the status quo. Yeah. You know, you get a, a corporate manual, you get brand guidelines, and, <laughs> and, you like, and, you're, and you're, you're there taking care of it. We get paid to break the mold and, and, and you know, come up with a, with a new, but it takes bravery and, and it takes a client like, like you know, Todd and JP and, and the entire team to say, you know what? Bring it, bring it. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit tired of the FTE discussion. Uh, we should move on to FT, FTs. Uh, <laughs> this is not about the scope. It's about understanding that you're working for a great brand. It's a challenger brand. So we're continuously knocking on his door. And these guys uh, are so charged and so motivated. And, uh, you know, you get what, what you bargain for and, and you know, the emotional compensation. And, you know, I see Todd and, and JP as, as perks, emotional perks for the team. Mm. And when you <laughs> just describe to me the moment that someone showed you the logo concept and how you 
you, 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 there was a spark. No, no, you, you know, we said this has so much legs. This is a platform. This is not just a right. idea. Right, that was the difference between a yeah. creative idea and a yeah. platform. Yeah, this is a platform. And we had ragu, we had some snacks, some Frito-Lay, right? and, and we kept showing him. But then when Todd said, you know what, what about burgers? I said, wow, uh, <laughs> we're the McDonald's agency. So at first, oh, I was, was a little bit uh, right. hesitant. And uh, the more we thought about it, the more the idea you know, oh my kept God. growing. Well, that's the thing. And Rob, I'm going to come to you on this one. Um, yep. And then Todd, I'm going to ask you to talk about the legal challenges that you must have faced <laughs> with this, because oh, yeah. this was not a small challenge, obviously, with this type of legal issue. But Rob, you, you Vayner jumped in this. And this is what I want to hit both on the idea that you worked on, but also the fact that Alma and Vayner Media are not the same company. <laughs> and <laughs> if I can just it, highlight that fact. Uh, the, it, it, having a partnership that can happen between agencies is also uh, not, a, not a standard condition. So talk about the idea that you guys added on and then and how it worked in. 100%, 100%. And I, I know this is a conversation about collaboration, a conversation about the open Collaborability. Brief. Collaborability, Collaborate. exactly correct. Uh, but um, we, if you think about the idea they presented, the real win creatively is the logo. Like, so, so big, big salute to you, uh, Luis, me, and your team. We were on the team, but it was really that idea for me for the win. And, and as a creative leader, as just a crazy person, or as someone in advertising, there can be a tendency to see an idea like that and go, fuck, right? And like, <laughs> and even a little anger sets in, like, I really wish that we were the ones that did that. And I know how I felt, and I got a little angry, and I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> but, but in reality, like, and this is something we talk a lot about at VaynerMedia, like, it took some humility to really just step, a back, step back and rather than reject the idea and say, screw that, we're not touching it, really lean in and think about how can we bolster the idea? How can we forward the conversation? And really what we did is a scientific fact, right? We, we've, we've seen that from the case study and from Todd. The logo thing is what it is. It's been there all along. We thought maybe the mascots are in on it as well. So we kind of put them into the conversation as well. I got to say, Todd, that, yeah. when, they, when they pitched that thought to you, what, what, what ran through your head? Like, so, I know, we'll use the Wendy, we'll use Ronald McDonald. That, that's got to be so easy. So, so easy, <laughs> um, especially when you have McDonald's as one of your clients. And but you're you used a, to this kind of legal challenge. Yeah, generally. so my, I have a special relationship with our lawyers. <laughs> so go, just like a lot of the I'm projects, married to a lawyer, so. A lot, of the, a lot of the projects that we do. And listen, and one of the things, back to talk about you know, collaboration, one of the things is one thing for agency client marketing to marketing but even right. internally as a client you know what a lot of agencies don't understand or appreciate is that you need a champion internally to break down walls fight for the idea protect it and make it actually happen yeah. um, and so there's always a lot of reasons not to whether it's you know in legal there's a lot of risk around totally. a lot of different things especially as a challenger brand you know and We've gotten our share of cease and desists and things like that, but it's, it's taken the right things. And so really bringing them along on the journey from the start. And so we brought our legal team in early and I said, hey, we, they know the vision of the Challenger brand, what we're trying to do really in the category and how this is so on brand for Pepsi. It's around our positioning of unapologetic enjoyment, which is we want people to enjoy their burgers to the best. We're launching this campaign better with Pepsi that really ties into it. And, um, you know, we had a lot, I mean, this went all the way up to our, our CEO and we had to fight for it. And, there, and I'll be honest, it didn't even, the first round we went through it, 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 it got killed. Um, and oh, we had dead. to wait. I think twice. It, it, it got <laughs> killed a couple times. We, and, um, we were and one of these, morning, morning it. And one of these, and we were literally wow. into the point where, um, you know, goonies never say die. And it's, uh, if you, <laughs> if you have a good friends. idea, you got to then get the, um, the right idea around it and, and fight again or figure out how to reposition it. And, we brought it back, and um, here we are, and we did it. Love it. Amazing. So <laughs> just as a quick question I have for actually all of you, your closest partner on your, uh, with all of your brands that you work with and Todd with you, what would you say, if I had to give you, is it your, the CFO, the legal, or the, you know, or the CEO? Where do you sort of found, find that it's most important to have the best relationships to get hard things done? I think it starts with um, you need to understand your, the ins and outs of your organization and how sure. the decision making. There's some leaders that push it all down and it's just, hey, you guys do your thing. Some CEOs want to be very hands on. Sometimes you have legal people who are very risk averse. Some are, so you need to understand the lay of the land. And I think it starts with bringing them in on the vision early on. Say, hey, this is what the brand's about. This is what we're trying to do. And 
it really started, I mean, years ago when I was very junior, it was coming into like, how can we push something through? How can we get it approved? As opposed to start early and say, hey, I want to understand the risk. Let's talk about it. OK, what can we do to solve it? Is there anything to mitigate it? Or is it worth it? So now, and then you start to build the trust. And over time, people start to get hit on the board. And it starts to kind of snowball. And, yeah. um, and that's, where, that's where it goes. Do you two both have a suggestion on, on the partnerships with your, with your different clients that you have about where, in fact, they find the most traction that can happen internally? You know, I keep it very simple. I talk about pride, fun, and money in that strict order. <laughs> uh, you know, you is it as Alma, a is it, Those are Alma's you know, vision. No, you know, <laughs> if you're proud of the work, more work will come your way. Totally. And, and you know, it has to be fun. We, we know it's, it's hard. But uh, if you create this fun environment and, and the openness to, to push back, because you, what, what's neat is that he pushes us back. You know, he, he challenges us. Right. And, and sometimes he makes the, the, the work better. Sometimes we disagree. <laughs> but but, but he, it's, it's an open communication. That's it. And, right. and, and that's the beauty of it. You know, we were talking. Some CMOs prefer to, to watch from the sidelines. Right. Uh, Todd wants to get messy. He wants to, to co-create. And I think that you know, the, the, the result uh, is, is better work. Rob, what do you think about the CMOs that like to get messy versus the CMOs that stay in from this? Not to, not to make any clients sure, feel uncomfortable, sure, but sure. I, I think it's uh, the instinct that I always have as a, now as a CMO. Uh, <laughs> I like to jump in. I like to be a part of it. And I like to feel, and so that when I'm describing it to someone else, they feel my enthusiasm about it because it, it wasn't just like someone pitched it to me and now I'm turning to someone else and I'm like, yeah, it's great. I mean, I, Todd is one of a kind. There's, there's no doubt about it. Loves to jump in, loves to get his hands dirty. I think it takes a tremendous amount, as a creative leader speaking for myself, I think it takes a tremendous amount of humility to partner in this manner. Like, like where I come from, I used to say an idea can come from anywhere, newsflash. I didn't really mean it. I <laughs> felt like it had to come from me yeah. or it had to come yeah. from my team. And this really fosters a culture of really open collaboration where ideas truly can come from anywhere. Something we do internally with, with, with Pepsi and also internally. We foster that everywhere. So it's not just, it's not just creative, it's media, strategy, account. I had our, our legal counsel pitch me Super Bowl ideas after a couple <laughs> fucking drinks. And I got to be honest, some of them were good. Right? So, but, 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 this, but this openness, if, you, if you're open to it, it can really lead to the special groundbreaking work. I want to talk, um, OK, we said Super Bowl, so now when legally, <laughs> I would have to ask, do you have anything you want to discuss for the Super Bowl for us all to be excited about? Yeah, we, we you know the halftime show. I know. So we got the, we got what, what's the magic going to happen? It's going to be awesome. We're, um, you know, we're going to be filming some, some content and some other stuff coming out. It's, uh, we're excited. Obviously. Just so you know, Todd year, did text me. He asked me, cleared the name. Don't steal no, it. Yeah, so this year we got um, you know, five icons coming together uh, in LA. It'll be, it'll be awesome. But I do, I do want to build on something that Rob please, was going on. Please, go back to the topic on, on, the, on the topic, if that's cool. Um, but it is this idea of um, when you think of content of the idea of client and um, agency. Oops. And you think of the idea of just these terms that are so almost Mad Men-esque in our industry. I'm going to pitch you an idea. I'm, did you buy the concept? I'm going to sell it to sell you. Sell it to you. Like, that's transactional. I feel dirty talking <laughs> about that. And that is not a partnership. That's like a salesman and somebody got the better end of the deal, right? And somebody won, somebody lost. At the end of the day, you know, we're all like co-conspirators at the end of the day. If we're trying to go after the same North Star, we have the same vision. Listen, when, when great work happens, which happens very rare that the stars all align with yeah. everything, budget, legal, t teams, all that stuff. When they do, it's mad. everyone feels the love, feels the win. You go get the awards, you high five, you're feeling great, you see your work in the world, and it's, it's awesome. But you can get that more often if you have that mutual level of respect, and you just treat each other as, as equals and how do you, kind of build it. How do you, uh, it's difficult. I mean, listen, I know the business model of agencies. I've been on both sides. It's very hard to make an agency collaborate with another agency. How did this, <laughs> how did this happen this way? You know, look, I think it, it's it, a love it, it has to do with, with you know, the, the environment that he creates. But it also has to do with our culture. I always talk about you know, staying away from the not invented here syndrome. Uh, we're a multicultural agency, and we're used to working with other partners. That's part of your ethos, Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, multicultural shops are really thriving. And, and you know, I think we reflect society probably better than some, some general market shops. 
you know, this process makes me think of, of something which is a little bit more big picture. Collaboration like this is going to bring us back into the ideas business. We're, we're stuck in the service business. Yeah. Mm, and I think we need Love to that. move on. We need, we need to, to change the equation, forget about you know, the hours. Uh, ROI should be return on idea, not, not on investment. Mm. Um, I love that idea, um, Louis. Uh, sorry, I'm going to ask you all. There is there is a question and a, an answer session. If you guys want to submit questions, I will come up here if they meet the approval of the uh, overlords uh, that uh, they get to decide whether or not. There we go. No questions posted yet, ladies and gentlemen. So get those questions, but no rush. Um, so I, I want to go back to this thought: the, the, having the ability to have a return on an idea. Uh, because agencies, it's a business, guys. Yeah, we yeah. have to make money, right? So the question is, how do you have, um, there, of course, inherently, there's a KPI. How are we going to show that the work, that marketing has this problem? Because yeah. it's yeah. a separate, it's separate than, the, than the, the sort of more functional parts of the organization. The COO knows exactly how many widgets they need to make and the profit margin they make on each of the widgets. Marketing is fuzzier and softer and more jazz hands. So the question is, with, uh, with an RO, with a return on idea, how would you possibly measure that? I think you have to embed this notion of proactiveness. You know, if you think about it, at agencies, we do our best work when it's proactive. You know, and, and the, the lines of, of the tennis court have been drawn mm -hmm. by understanding the brand. You don't need to wait for a specific brief. And, and this was a great example. We were talking food, but when he saw it, he said, hmm, let's Perfect. make it more specific. Right. And, and that's how the process, you know, it used to be a snow fight between agencies, and, and it has become a snowball. And, and in this case, a real avalanche. You know, it keeps growing and growing. He posted it, and you had how many? 1.5 million yeah. uh, impressions on LinkedIn. Well, there, did Todd, not Pepsi, but you posted it and had one point? Yeah, share on his thing, personal. That's it's, a pretty good. It's end. crazy. That's in, a great post. Yeah. Um, uh, Rob, I'm curious. The collaboration model. Do, do you do this with your agency with other agencies, or does this, is this only happen with Alma and Pepsi, or is it client driven? I'm guessing. We do it with other agencies, just repeating the success. Because I think once you do it, once you do that round zero, once you have that process set up in the beginning, mm -hmm. it leads to better work. Right? Yeah. You're all on the same page. And all creative's goals are to get to, I think all of our goals, but truly creative goals, the department I lead, they want to get to the best work possible. Yeah. And by doing it this way, by staying on the same page the whole time, the end result is great work. We're, we're talking about this. There's two other Pepsi things we could be talking about. There are other things we're talking about. And it's all part of this process. We're already brainstorming on, on, on what's next. One, one, of the things I say to, yeah. one of the things I say to the team based on this is if you're selling your idea, if you're pitching your idea, you've already lost. And some of them don't understand that, but what I mean by that is, if you show up with a ta-da and there's no runway, like I like to say, more, ta more less ta-da, more aha, and all that is is just keeping it lockstep the whole process mm -hmm. before you go full-blown boards and full-blown everything, and then you leave going, fuck, they didn't like my idea, right? Because it just came out of the blue. Because Start that gets early, back to the round zero uh, thought, which is That's the it. thing that I think that I took away from our conversation when we were talking about what we're going to chat about. The round zero thought allows everyone to sort of get alignment on what is the brief for what we're going to go do. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's almost like you think of how a lot of networks do like development of shows. Like, again, we could look at the 5,000 scripts coming in and say, good one, bad one. But, and sometimes it's just a minor executional detail. There's a good nugget of an idea under it, but someone in the room is hung up because it has a multi-million dollar celebrity, or we could never do it, or they took it too far with the joke, and it never gets the light of day. And there's a really rich, smart idea beneath it. And so let's start with like, hey, is this the right idea? And then, yeah, let's double click in and let's get some executions around that. full steam on that. We're out of time. We are, we are. But I want to just uh, take this moment to thank the three of you so very much, uh, Todd, Rob, thank you. Lamy. Thank you guys so much thank for you, your insight you, and Josh. this great idea. And I hope that you all had the benefit that, that I had when I had the first conversation to think about how you can all employ that idea of a round zero thought to change the way that you're actually approaching your agency and client relationships, because it does change the moment of, of collaboration from that first step. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>